So apparently they had like a YouTube channel like five years ago, but he somehow started stalking them. In the year 2022, uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children had over 80,000 cyber tips related to the online exploitation of minors. I've talked to a lot of people in my career, and when they can't access child porn, do you know what they use? He discovered where she lived, and to her horror, she says showed up at her house in Florida with a shotgun at 4.30 in the morning. I'm so glad for these new moms pimping their daughters out. Literally just refresh your Instagram Explore page. There's fresh preteens. As long as this stuff legally exists, I just enjoy it. These are all messages posted by men on Telegram groups dedicated to obsessing over images of child influencers. The digital age has ushered in a new era of family documentation. Family blogging, once a niche genre, has exploded in popularity, offering viewers a glimpse into the everyday lives of families. While it allows parents to share precious moments and create a digital record of their child's growth, a dark side lurks beneath the surface. The question of when documenting a child's life online crosses the line into exploitation becomes increasingly complex. The case of Ren Eleanor, a four-year-old girl with a staggering 17 million followers on TikTok, exemplifies this precarious tightrope walk. Managed by her mother, Jacqueline, Ren's account features seemingly innocuous content, playful moments, mealtimes, and the general typical tapestry of childhood. Yet the sheer volume of followers raises a chorus of concern. Is this simply a mother sharing her daughter's joy, or is something more sinister at play? The red flags flutter in the digital breeze. A disproportionate number of saves on videos featuring Ren in swimwear or bathtubs sparks alarm. Disturbing search suggestions linked to her name add fuel to the fire, hinting at the potential motivations of some viewers. Then people started noticing what happens when you type Ren into the search bar. All these searches come up and that's obviously the top searches for this thing. Um, most of them are gone now, but some of them were like Ren scandalous outfits. One that still pops up is Ren Pickle. Critics argue that Jacqueline may be crossing ethical boundaries. Some videos showcase Ren in outfits deemed provocative for a child. One particularly controversial video depicts Ren demonstrating how to use a tampon and shave, topics far removed from the realm of a four-year-old's experience. And this TikTok, in comparison to an average TikTok of Ren just having fun, has 385,000 saves. Jacqueline vehemently denies any accusations of exploitation, claiming the account began as a digital scrapbook. She insists the content is innocent. It started out as a hobby to make a digital scrapbook for my daughter, Ren, grew into an interesting role for me as a single stay-at-home mom. Okay, so these are Ren's followers for the past 28 days. She usually is like on an upward slope gaining followers, but then October came and she just like stopped gaining and she was like staying the same, but now she's losing followers. Can we please help her? She highlights the large female demographic, 76% among her viewers, but conveniently avoids addressing the remaining 24%. This significant number of male viewers watching a young girl raises an eyebrow, especially considering the nature of some videos. TikTok analytics show that my followers are 76.8% female. That's more than 13 million females, including lots of moms. And I thank you for watching and for your interest in my family. Furthermore, her silence on the potential for predatory behavior online suggests a concerning naivete. What you need to know is that no law enforcement agencies I conferred with, including the FBI, have found any proof that my daughter's likeness appears on inappropriate websites. Listen, this isn't my usual content, but as a certified newborn care specialist and professional nanny, I'm always a passionate advocate for children's welfare, and I can't hold my tongue about this anymore. In Jacqueline's now infamous defensive rebuttal video, she claims that the FBI has told her that there is no evidence of Wren on sites that host CSAM content. 
predators wouldn't need to share content of Rin on their dark forums because the videos they like and save are readily available on Jacqueline's account. This isn't a service provided by the FBI. Parents can't just call them up and say, hey, here's what my child looks like. Can you scan the entire internet and tell me if they're being exploited by predators? Predators are hiding in plain sight. I've talked to a lot of pedophiles my career and when they can't access child porn, do you know what they use? They looked at 5,000 child accounts and 32 million followers were adult men. Meta has disclosed that over 500,000 accounts every day have inappropriate content or interactions. When a parent posts a picture of a child and they appear more sexist, like in a bathing suit, they get far more likes and comments from adult men. The dangers of oversharing a child's life online are harshly illuminated in Ren's case. Predators lurk in the shadows of the internet, and children are especially vulnerable. While Jacqueline emphasizes her daughter's enjoyment in creating content, the potential psychological impact remains an unaddressed elephant in the room. Not all kids get that right or that choice to be included in these, in these materials, and quite frankly, don't always get the explanation of what it could mean for them, the implications of it long term. Being thrust into the spotlight from such a young age can have lasting consequences, altering childhood experiences and potentially warping self-perception. It was like a camera put in my face instead. And so like, I think that was the moment I realized I was just like, I don't know, I, not, I, I kind of felt like a product almost. A Reddit subreddit with over 21,000 followers has become a beacon of hope. Known as the Save Ren Movement, this online community is a testament to the growing unease regarding Ren's situation. Many users express fear that Jacqueline is willfully ignoring the very real dangers her daughter faces. Sucking on a straw, eating a turkey leg, eating a kebab, and then licking a straw, 20,000 saves. Sucking on a straw, 50,000 saves. Changing her eye color and almost looking even older, 300,000 saves. When you post videos on social media, you can see when people start watching the video and when they stop. You can also see at what point during the video they choose to like and save it. Despite clear regulations against child exploitation on platforms like TikTok, Ren's account remains active. This raises serious questions about the effectiveness of online platform enforcement. The case of Ren Eleanor serves as a reminder of the urgent need for stricter regulation and the paradigm shift in responsible parenting within the digital age. Sharing a child's life online carries considerable weight. The internet is a permanent record and decisions made today can have lasting repercussions for a child's future. I desperately just want a second chance at life. And so that's kind of how like my platform got built. Protecting children's privacy and safeguarding their innocence becomes paramount in this ever evolving landscape of social media. The psychological impact on children raised in the spotlight deserves further exploration. It's a different culture to grow up in uh, in the eye of social media, and the pressures are very different. They're much more intense. While some may appear to thrive on constant attention, the pressure to perform and the lack of a normal childhood experience can lead to detrimental consequences. We must work together to create a safer online environment for children by fostering open conversations about the potential dangers and demanding of accountability from platforms, we can ensure the internet remains a space for connection, not exploitation. You really have no reliable way as a parent or really any user of social media of knowing exactly which eyeballs will be on the data that is reflected in your post now or in the future. Resources are available to help if you suspect child exploitation online. Please visit the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at www.missingkids.org home for more information and reporting options. Remember, every click, like, and share contributes to the digital footprint of a child. Let's choose to be responsible consumers of online content and ensure the well-being of the most vulnerable members of our digital society.